Welcome Defenders! With Dungeon Defenders 2 now free to play on Steam, I'm seeing a lot of new players join and I figured now is about the time when uh, I should do a new player guide. And I'm going to be doing a couple different videos for this new player guide and a couple different sections to each of the videos. So check out the annotations if you want to skip by a few things. Um, but overall, these are going to be some really good things for new players, but it might also be some random things that uh, older players don't know. Um, as for myself, a lot of these things were things that I found out more recently, um, even though I've been kind of playing this game on and off uh, since it really began. Uh, I remember testing out the first map that showed up. So um, a lot of these different things are are things that they mention in the game, but I mean, they're, you're learning so much at once in this game, it's kind of hard to remember these things. So I'm going to kind of go through for new players, and I'm going to kind of skip past a lot of the things that might be... Um, Something that everyone knows, but I do want to glance over a few things just so that the new players do know them. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is the classes. Now, don't think too much into the classes when you're making them because you're going to need all of the classes. But there are a few that I would like to recommend for certain players um, when you're starting out, which is... Just to kind of go over a little bit, um, the Apprentice is one of the heroes I would recommend. It is a builder hero. Uh, it's a ranged DPS class if you want to build it as DPS. It uses elemental towers, which have elemental damage. A lot of utility. Um, I would say its base damage and base health for its towers are slightly lower than the Squire, but it has more utility. The Squire is a builder hero. Again, I would highly recommend starting with either this or the Apprentice. This one is a melee DPS class if you're playing him as DPS. If you play him as a builder, um, he has physical towers, uh, a little bit higher stat-wise, but um, again, a little bit less utility than the Apprentice. Overall, I would start with one of these two because these are the easiest if you ever want to solo a map. If you join a map and everyone's playing DPS characters, sure, you can all kind of hold out a lane, but it's very, I mean, it just makes it a lot easier if you level a builder first. The next two heroes are, sure, they can build towers, they can build things, but they are much more difficult to solo maps. The Huntress, which right now is arguably one of the higher DPS classes in the game if you build her DPS, um, has different traps and a poison dart tower. A lot of fun. I mean, I really like playing the Huntress, but very difficult to solo with. Uh, it's a ranged DPS class if you do want to play as DPS. Um, and the Monk, which is a ranged or melee DPS class, depending on how you want to play him. He has uh, three auras and one tower. Tons of utility. I would say uh, one of the highest utility classes in the game. And the has one of the most powerful towers in the game, except for the fact that it only hits air units. So um, if you do want to play either the Monk or the Huntress, uh, make sure that you're in a group of people that have a bunch of different classes. Or just make sure that they're one of the later classes that you make. Tons of fun, but um, again, the uh, recommended heroes, Apprentice and the Squire, are just better for soloing in the beginning. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is kind of the taverns. When you create your character, you start it in the public tavern. There's usually a bunch of people um, just kind of running around in this area. They're all sitting there, like, building different buildings. Uh, you've got a bunch that are, like, sitting there building all these over here by the target dummies. Uh, it's, they all start attacking, and if you're on a lower spec computer, it starts lagging. So I usually recommend just being in a private tavern. If you don't know how to get there, um, it's this door over here. So right as you log in, you can just run over, go through the door, you're in a private tavern. The benefits of being in a private tavern, one, there's less uh, commotion, and two is you can invite your friends before you go on a map. Let's say all of your friends log on on a Friday and you all want to play Dungeon Defenders, but you're not really sure what map you want to do. You could all kind of hop in a group and discuss it while you're in a group, then whenever you're ready, you start the map, you're all in the same map. You don't need to invite them when you get into the game. So I, I recommend usually staying in a private tavern. If you ever want to get back to a public tavern, you just go up to these big doors back here and that'll bring you back there. If you want to invite your friends on Steam, you use the Steam functions, shift tab by default, invite your friends through there. Um, if you want to invite them through PlayStation, I believe it's all through the PlayStation network, um, all through your friends list in there. So that's pretty much it on terms of that. I want to get into some of the major hotkeys that are, again, they're kind of mentioned, but you're learning so much in the game, it's hard to remember some of these things. Um, escape is one that I use often. It uh, brings up a menu, shows your party, but you can also get to your options from here if you want to change the resolution, uh, any of the options in the game. 
Uh, you also have the ability to leave your group, um, quit to desktop, things like that. Uh, the one that I feel you're going to use the most is I. And again, guys, I, I'm sorry I'm talking so fast, but I want these videos to be short and insightful. Um, so if I'm talking too fast, I can just mention it in the comments. I'll make sure that my videos aren't, um, I guess, this rushed. But again, I just want to get as much information in as possible. So I, which is the hotkey that I feel is the most important, or at least the most used, is going to be your inventory, your character, your hero deck, and your collections. Um, I'm going to move into character first. In character, you can find info, which is going to tell things about your hero. This is actually where I learned a lot of random things about the apprentice, um, because they have this whole marking system, and I had no clue what it was. So I ended up clicking on Arcane Volley to read what like what skills used marking and how they used them, and then the biography. I found out how to mark enemies. I didn't know that at first. Um, also, as I was leveling up, I um, got impatient, wanted to see what towers I would get next, so I went here to kind of see what the towers did. It was pretty cool. Um, so you'll know that character tab, the info is pretty useful in the beginning when you're learning. Um, later on, it's just an extra tab. Stats, you're going to use these as you're leveling up. I recommend the tower range first and then tower attack right next because you won't be finding those stats on any pieces of armor, uh, especially if you're going to be a tower builder. If you're going to be a tower or a DPS, you can kind of go into some of the other stats. But uh, again, I would recommend a tower builder first. After that, it really just depends on what you feel you need. I felt I needed a little bit of health at first for my towers, and once I got a little bit of health, I was fine. I switched over to damage, and I've just been going straight into damage at that point. Um, you get sphere sheets. They explain this pretty well, um, but what I recommend is buying, when you reach level 15, you buy the experience spheres. Uh, this will help you level up a lot faster, which from level 40 to level 50, it can get a little bit grindy. Um, I will have a leveling video to get put a little bit more information on where to buy these and how to level up a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, um, probably a little bit later. The hero deck is where you're going to have all of your heroes, where you're going to create new heroes, where you're going to unlock slots, all that. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Collections is where there's titles, uh, challenges, you get titles, you get gold. Pretty self-explanatory. Inventory, there's two major things I want to mention in the inventory. Um, the first is you have all of your equipment down here. You can look at the stats, you can look at uh, anything that you want to. Um, change your equipment. Uh, now. A few things to mention about the inventory. When they start out, they mention a little bit about auto-collect. Auto-collect, my biggest tips for new players is don't auto-collect your first bag because that's going to be your bag for looting items. If, you want, if you're looking at 100 items that are on the ground and there's only one that you want and all the rest you want to sell, then pick up that one item. It's going to go in your first bag. Set all your other bags. Um, now, I, I have the first two as um, personal bags, and I've got all the rest as auto-collect bags. But I would recommend setting all the rest as auto collect bags, and then at the end of each round, they will all your items will fill into these bags, and then they will um, you can sell them later. You just go into sell mode. You can do sell all. You can click certain items out of here. You can organize them however you want to, and in the end, you just do the uh, sell all. So that's usually what I recommend for that. Um, the the other main things to know about the inventory um it can get a little bit cluttered with some of these things um i it's it's up to you if you want to buy bags but i don't recommend it um in the beginning find out if you like the game first then start buying some bags they're pretty cheap five bucks gets you two bags um one thing to note is you can you can open up this menu in game um in a map and you can sell items in a map, you can switch characters in a map, as long as the round isn't going, you can sell items. So let's say round one, um, a ton of items drop for whatever reason, and you loot all of them in your bags at 70%. You can, before round two starts, you could press I and go through and just sell all of your stuff in your bags, and then go through and start round two and loot all the items again by round two. So, um, it's one of those things that you don't really need bag space in this game. Like a lot of people are like, "Oh, the game's paid away, and you need bag space." It's really not. Like I played for a while with two bags not even on there, um, and I was I was perfectly fine. I played with three bags not even on there, and I was perfectly fine. And I just had to sell in between waves or 
um, change up. I mean, get move around some of this stuff. I, I saved a bunch of legendaries because I didn't know what to do with them. Now that I'm almost high level, I realize that you loot legendaries all the time. So if there's legendaries that don't have the exact stats, the exact abilities that you want, you just sell them. You just move on. Um, so that's, I mean, those are the main um, hotkeys that you can do in the tavern that you're going to be needing quite a bit. So you don't have to run over here every time that you... Uh, want to change your class or whatever a um, um, couple things that aren't really mentioned that are in the tavern you're going to go through and you're going to see all of these things they're going to explain them and I would definitely listen to them as they're explaining them but overall um, the only one that I leveled all the way up and I didn't get an explanation for was this scavenger guy back here now from my understanding correct me if I'm wrong add in the comments whatever what he does is if you kill a, let's say, a flying enemy that's flying over, like, a hole, and it drops a legendary and it falls off the map, I believe the scavenger's job is to give you those items afterwards. Now, I've only had him give me items probably twice, so that's just kind of my assumption on it, so correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that's what the scavenger seems to be. The rest of um, everything in the tavern is pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to start going into some really good tips for um, actually in the game. Okay, defenders. So when you get into game, there's a few things to note. Um, some of these things are explained very quickly, very early on, um, like these chests. You you use blue mana for um, for hero abilities, which is your everything over on the left, tornado, uh, mana bomb, all that stuff. Uh, green mana you get from these boxes, and you also get from killing enemies. Um, you use this for your towers. And the um, just so you know, when you join a group with another um, with other people that you might not know, some of them might ask for you to drop mana or drop um, or like drop du, drop mana, things like that. Um, if they ask for that, there's two ways to do it. The hotkey itself is M. It drops 10 mana, um, and you can go through. They can then pick it up and start building. Let's say, for example, it's a brand new area. You you join, and they haven't built anything yet, but you're like a level 10, and you're, for whatever reason, joined like level 50 map. Your towers aren't going to do very much, so you want to give your mana to them so that they can build all of the towers first. So you just kind of run up to them, you drop down a bunch of mana, and um, you're good. So what I just tried to do is drop some uh, blue mana, which you're not allowed to do that right now. Um, but it's in order to drop green mana, it's M. In order to drop blue mana, it's N. I don't see why anyone ever needs to drop blue mana, but um, in case you ever need that. If you want to drop all of your mana at once, currently um, it's a little buggy, but it should be control M to drop all of it at once. If not, you drop it in increments of 10. Uh, the next thing really to look out for is these little lines right here. These show you the direction that the enemies are going to be coming from. Um, so all of the enemies are going to spawn over here, and they're going to come down this way and pretty much go straight for your, your cart over here. And this is what I'm trying to defend on this map. Um, this is pretty much the first map that you're going to see. I'm on hard mode right now, so it's a little bit crazier for this. Um, but yeah, so... You're going to see a couple different colors, and when I was doing this, they didn't explain this until I got to pretty much the last level on the campaign. And I'm going to help you guys out just a little bit. What these colors are is a resistance. This orange is a resistance to physical damage, and this purple is a resistance to magic damage. White is no resistance whatsoever. Um, the resistance isn't that important when you're actually going up in the game because the resistance is only like 10%. But later on, when you do like incursions, um, it's, it gets up to like 60%. And it could get a lot higher, I'm not really sure. I've seen like Nightmare Mode 5 and all that. I don't know if that has like some stupid high resistance. But um, from what I've seen, the highest that I've seen so far is about 60%, 55, 60%. Um, so that's something to definitely look for or look at for the future. But for now, don't worry about it too much. One important thing that I can say is holding shift is going to tell you a lot. And this is something that's really important that a lot of people actually don't think about. When you're playing alone, um, a lot of times people don't realize that the waves sometimes come out more in certain areas on some rounds and then more in different areas on other rounds. So in this round, um, there is a... 
a zone that's spawning 50 enemies. And then the other two zones are 37 and 38. So you want to do a little bit more defense on the 50 enemy area just because it's going to have a lot more enemies. And uh, you, I mean, if you have the extra mana, throw an extra tower over there. This will change every... Um, every round though so next round it could be over here and then you have to worry about it over here so I'm going to get a build going and give a little bit more tips as we get going okay so now that I have a build I just wanted to go over a little bit of the other things I'm gonna start the wave up and there's gonna be in a lot of these maps there's gonna be these little objective not objectives but these little things that you can use and they do different things. If you look over, there's this little green um, zone that you can that kind of shows you where this one's going to activate. Now this is an ice cart, so you can imagine it's going to freeze everything in the area. Um, this allows my towers to hit them while they can't move. So let's say I wanted to use that and freeze everything. Now one thing that you notice is I actually triggered that by shooting it. I didn't trigger it by using the E activate, which is what you see um, when you walk up to these things that says E to activate. You can press E or you can shoot it or let's say you're a warrior and you've got 100 enemies in between you and the cart. You can use an ability and the ability will trigger it. So that actually helps out quite a bit if you can use those um, abilities from afar because then you can sit and defend one lane and if you realize that there's a lot of enemies over at the other lane you could just kind of shoot at it and activate it from over there. Now remember I am on hard mode so a lot of these things are going to be a little bit different from when you start like for example uh, there's air that is spawning on this wave and what air does is they are going to go over these walls which have significantly more health than the towers um, if you can see the towers that I have are about I don't know 10,000 and the wall is about 30,000 it's about three times the amount of health so these air will fly right over the walls and they'll go straight over to your base um, now these air start to spawn on hard pretty much on every map and they go I mean some maps they'll change which areas spawn the air, um, but most are about the same areas. Um, the air, you can see the zone, it just kind of flies over. And the, the air zone is very important to watch because sometimes it will skip over these little areas that um, you don't normally defend. So sometimes it'll go from one lane to another. Um, it's very important that when you see air on the map, if you look on the map over on the right, uh, it has a little spawn area that has wings. Watch those really carefully, because when that does spawn, you want to know where the air is going so you can defend against it. One thing to note, you'll learn this pretty early on, but if you are upgrading something, it full heals it. So before repairing anything, um, decide if that's something that you want to upgrade. If something's taking a lot of damage, odds are you probably need to upgrade it. So instead of actually repairing it and wasting your gems to repair it, you might as well just upgrade it. But um, another thing to note is when you're upgrading or repairing while you're actually in a, uh, not in the build phase, but in the combat phase, it will take time. There's a casting time for it. This can be decreased with different items and abilities. But uh, for now, um, you do have to do that and it will take time. What I recommend is kind of see how it's playing out before upgrading anything. Um, if it feels like a lot of things are hitting you from range, you might want to upgrade your range first so that they can get a little bit farther range and maybe hit things before they can actually get to your buildings. If you're getting destroyed by a lot of bombers that kind of just bomb your buildings, I would recommend upgrading your walls first so that the bombers hit your wall before it actually gets to your tower. What you just saw over here that dropped was a legendary. Um, when legendaries or mythics drop, it will tell you that they dropped and legendaries will show up on um, your your screen while all other items will show up on your map as little swirlies. Um, overall it's it's pretty easy to, to pay attention to. Items all give stats, that's pretty basic if you've played any MMO, um, but overall it's, it's pretty good. So this is kind of what I was talking about over here is um, it used to have 50 that were spawning over at this market path and now it only has 32, but now the horde, where a lot of things are spawning, the horde is going to be spawning over here, which are 50 enemies. So now if I had the time, I would want to go through and I would want to upgrade 
this zone over here, I'd be like, okay, well, let's upgrade a couple towers so that when all these enemies come in, uh, I'll be prepared for it. Another thing that you'll notice is it has a little flashing one over here. That means that there is a mini boss that is going to spawn from this area. These mini bosses have a ton of health. Um, they do quite a bit more damage than the other enemies. And sometimes they have unique abilities that the other enemies do not have. So with the... With the mini boss coming from this lane, I'm going to want to upgrade a couple more things over on this lane as well. I will do a video in the future about the easiest ways to solo maps and how I recommend placing towers uh, because it is a little bit different than the last game and some other games that you might play uh, for the optimal way to place towers before you get a lot of gear. The last thing that I want to mention while we're um, actually in a map, and probably the last thing for this video, is the fact that you can do a lot of things at once. Um, what a lot of people do is they feel like they're limited to just DPSing or just repairing or just upgrading. Um, you can actually go and start upgrading, and as this is upgrading, I can sit here and DPS, I can jump, I can use skills, I can do a ton of things, and it's still being upgraded and it just finished upgrading. So you can do that with repairing, you can do that with upgrading. There's, I mean, so many things you can do. Don't limit yourself to just one um, because when levels start getting harder, you need to just get better. Um, uh, things aren't gonna get easier as you're going along. When you're in a group, what I recommend is if you're playing a DPS class, what I see too often is I see DPS classes just kind of sitting, and again, I'm going to mention this in probably a teamwork video, but I just wanted to mention it a little bit. I see DPS people sitting in one lane and DPSing forever, and then they upgrade everything over in their lane and think that they're helping. They are, but the problem is if you're going to be upgrading the lane that you're helping, it kind of defeats the purpose. What you want to do is you, f you want to find a lane that you're not in that's weak, like this one. The enemies are getting pretty close to the towers. Why not upgrade this lane and still DPS over in this lane? Because you're fine over here. I mean, you haven't had any problems over here. So why are you upgrading over here? You want to upgrade where it's difficult and then still DPS in your lane so you don't have to upgrade in your lane. Because you're pretty much, if you're a DPS character, you're worth like five or six towers. So... If there's four towers sitting here and you're here, it's like there's nine towers sitting here. So why upgrade the nine tower area when there's these like two tower areas over here? So if you're going to be a DPS class or if you're just helping out, I mean, if you join a group, if, if someone's already built everything, they're usually not going to get mad at you if you just kind of leech. Um, but, but if you're leeching, also repair and upgrade because... Just one person alone, it takes forever to upgrade and it's a lot of work. So as a final note to this video, um, just be courteous to other people. If you're going to join games and skip ahead in experience, skip ahead in uh, gear, make sure to at least help out in the group. Um, go up to things, upgrade things. I, I recommend upgrading everything to tier 2 first just because it's the cheapest. Um, but yeah, I mean, make sure to repair things, make sure to upgrade things. Overall, if you did like the video, um, I, I don't really mind if you like or subscribe or whatever. I'm going to be doing videos whether or not I get likes or subscribes. But um, if you share this video to other new players, help them out. Uh, and if you want me to do other videos in the future or speak slower, uh, leave a comment down below and I can kind of get a little bit more feedback so I can make you guys some better videos later. But um, as for this guide, uh, it is over and check out my other videos.